Hey everybody, this is Dr. Griggs. Gonna do a quick uh, demonstration of an ultrasound guided uh, IV. So uh, before we get started, I just wanna brief you on uh, maybe when you could consider doing an ultrasound guided IV. Really, my rule of thumb is two failed attempts with, without ultrasound. I'd I like to go ahead and just use ultrasound to try to put an IV in. There's a couple of big benefits. Number one, you can get big, large, kind of large vessels that are more proximal. Uh, that's helpful when you're given more caustic substances like potassium, maybe a presser. Also, it's very beneficial to uh, put on the ultrasound guided IVs just because you can minimize your, you're not poking somebody 50 times. Um, so that's when I, generally two failed attempts, I like to put use the ultrasound uh, and it's kind of enjoyable too. So uh, I think it's fun. Uh, anyway, I wanna, I wanna go over the equipment. Chest, if you can come around here. I'm gonna show you the equipment that, that I use for an ultrasound guided IV. So, so number one, I've got an ultrasound with the linear probe. So there's usually multiple probes with these ultrasounds. They're normally big, thick probes. There's one that's gonna be skinny. It's the highest frequency. It's called the linear probe. That's what you wanna use. It's very good for superficial structures in the skin and super and soft tissue. So I've got my ultrasound, it's turned on. See all the lines on the top of that ultrasound screen? That's what it looks like when the linear probe is turned on. So I know that my linear probe is working and when if I press on it, you can see that it's registering my finger rolling across that probe. <clears throat> so I've got the right ultrasound. I've got all the equipment laid out here. So I've got, I'm gonna have two uh, Tegaderm pads, one for the patient to secure the IV, one to put on the ultrasound to make it, to make it as clean as possible. I've got a uh, tourniquet for the patient. I've got alcohol swabs, sterile lube, not the lube that, not the big tube of lube that comes with the ultrasound. You wanna use the little sterile lube packets. An IV, preferably for the ultrasound, you're gonna use longer IVs. This is a two and a half inch catheter. Anything above 100, one and a half inches is, is gonna be better than the standard one to one and a half inch catheters. The larger the, the, larger the IV, the, uh, the larger the gauge, the better as well. Ultrasound picks up large needles better than small needles, so don't use a 24 gauge use a 20 or an 18 preferably. I like the 18s, they're very easy to see. Once your IV's in, you'll have your saline lock and your flush. If you wanna draw blood, draw get all of your blood draw equipment to wet ready as well. I'm not gonna draw blood for this one though. Um, have plenty of four by fours. You're gonna need extra four by fours, not for blood, but to get off any of the ultrasound gel after the fact, otherwise your tape won't stick. You wanna use an alcohol swab to help get some of that uh, lube off at the end. And then you wanna have a tegaderm, some tape, some coban to really make sure that IV doesn't come out. So once we've got all of our equipment ready, we're ready to put the, we're ready to start the procedure. So first things first, I'm just gonna glove up. This is not sterile, it's clean. So try to be as clean as you can. So I've got my gloves. First step, I'm gonna take my tegaderm, if I can open it. And I'm gonna put that tegaderm on the actual ultrasound probe, as so. Okay. I like to put that on. And then I hang this probe off the bed so it's not touching anything. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if I'm gonna put an IV in the right arm, I put my ultrasound on the left arm. Generally, I want me the vessel, the, the I guess direction of travel of the vessel and the ultrasound all to be in one straight line. So I'm not having to turn my head. It makes it very easy if you do it that way. So I've got the tegaderm on the, on, the, on the ultrasound probe. Next, I like to go ahead and put the tourniquet on the patient. So I go high with my tourniquet. Okay. So real high and tight. Now I'll leave that there. Okay, and his veins are just gonna get bigger and more swollen the longer I wait. So I'm gonna let that I'm gonna wait, to, I'm gonna put this tourniquet on and then do all the cleaning and prep. So next, I'm gonna clean. There's two spots I like to look. Number one is mid forearm. So I'll clean the mid forearm. Number two is gonna be proximal upper arm. That's where I look for my IVs. Also, you can always clean off the AC as, as well. So now I've got multiple spots that I can look with the ultrasound without having to re-clean. Okay, so next I get my needle. Make sure that the bevel, you know, Make sure the needle's functional, ready to go. Okay, and I like to put that needle just on top of the patient. Okay, I've got sterile lube. Put that lube. I usually put a little bit on the forearm to start and I'll save the rest of this lube in case I need it. 
Next step, I take my um, saline lock. With these ultrasound guided IVs, you can treat them more like central lines where you can actually, I like to aspirate some blood into the syringe to, to make sure that I'm in the right spot. So what I'll do is I'll push a little bit of fluid out. That way I've got some space to pull back on the syringe once I'm in. Okay, so that's ready. Okay, I got, I got all my other secure devices and everything ready to go, but I think it's time to get rolling. So there's two techniques with the ultrasound. And I'm just gonna demonstrate right here. So we're gonna look at the veins in two, in, in two planes. One is called transverse, where the ultrasound is just sitting kind of left to right, right over the vessel, okay? So Shessie, if you can, if you can go zoom in on that vessel there, the very top, can you point, Brian, can you point to that vessel? Very top, you see, yeah, let me point. Right here is the vessel, oh. Oh, wait, it's transverse, yeah. I know. Yeah, right here is the vessel, okay? When I press down, it collapses, okay? So that, that, that's transverse, it's a nice circle. Now, if I rotate my probe 90 degrees, I'll get a line like this across the, across the, uh, across the screen, and that's called longitudinal, okay? We're not gonna do anything in the longitudinal view, we're just gonna go transverse. So you should only ever see a circle. Circle means good, that's your target, okay? One thing I want to show you is on this ultrasound, there's a little dot on the side. You want that dot to be facing your left. So I can see that vessel. I've got the dot to my left. And when I press, the left side of the screen uh, is what's pressed. So everything, so left is left. If I flip that probe, when I press on the left, the right side of the screen uh, jiggles and it's very confusing. So make sure left is left when you look, okay? What I'm going to do when I put this IV in is number one, I'm going to, before I put it in, I'm going to verify that I'm putting an IV in a vein, not an artery. So let me see here. So you see there's three vessels right here. If I press down, there's one in the middle that's kind of winking. You see that pulsation? That's an artery, so I would not want to do that. So what I, what I want to do is press down on my veins and make sure they close off. If it doesn't close off and it's making that little pulsating motion, don't put an IV in it. Sometimes in the forearm, uh, if you press too hard, you can close off an artery and you'll think it's actually a vein. So what I do is I, 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 I don't completely collapse the vessels. I go about most of the way collapsed. So I collapsed it about 80% there or 20% there. And then look, everything's collapsed, but I can still see that winking vessel. So now I know I'm in, that's an artery. And next to that artery on the left and the right are two veins. Okay. Y'all see that? Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a good vein right here, we'll do that one, okay? Y'all see that big vein? Right in the middle. I'm gonna put an ultrasound, uh, an IV in there. What I'm gonna do is, where do I put my catheter? So I'm gonna take my catheter, I'm gonna get this, ultrasound, this uh, ve uh, vein right in the middle of my screen, and I'm gonna take my catheter and zoom in right here so I'm gonna put the needle just right in the middle of this, where this arrow is on the ultrasound at about a 45 degree angle pointed down, okay? And I'm gonna insert just ever so slightly through the skin and then I'm gonna take my ultrasound, my left hand, and pull back just a little bit till I see a bright white needle tip on the ultrasound. And at that point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing something called the leapfrog process where I take my left hand holding the ultrasound and I move it proximal up the patient's arm until I lose that needle tip. Once I lose that needle tip, I'm gonna advance the ultrasound, the IV, excuse me, the IV tip with my right hand until it comes back into the field of view. So there's this white tip, I'm gonna, that, that, that's what I'm trying to find. So I'll find the white tip and then I'll move my, once I have the white tip in view, I'm gonna intentionally lose that view by moving my left hand with the ultrasound proximal. Once I no longer see that tip, I'll push the tip just a little bit with my right hand until it comes back into the field of view. And I'm gonna leapfrog like this. Can you see Shesty? So it'll be boop, 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 boop. And that's how you know you're in. Uh, doctors and nurses both struggle with ultrasound guided IVs in different ways. Doctors, we have no idea how to put in IVs, so we have we fumbled through. We just don't know how to do anything with with the catheter or anything. Nurses, on the other hand, are very good with IVs. We all always look for flash. If you look for flash, what's going to happen is you're gonna you're gonna look away from the ultrasound, look for flash, 
you'll see the flash so when you look back you can no longer find your needle tip and what will often happen especially because you're using ultrasound gel that makes everything slick you'll not inadvertently puncture through that vessel you saw flash you'll puncture through and then you'll never be able to find your needle tip and you won't get the iv so don't look for flash the first time i look down is once i've already taken the needle out okay so now we're ready to put the iv in I will show you guys, so I'm gonna do that leapfrog technique. I will show you the longitudinal. Uh, I only use the, I only turn the ultrasound probe to get that nice longitudinal view of the vessel. Occasionally, I will only do that just to verify that the needle is in and not through the back wall of the vessel. I only do that after the fact to double check that I'm in the right, in the, in the lumen. So I'll, I'll see if I can demonstrate that here. Although to be honest, that'll do it a whole lot. Okay, so, so first things first, I compress. I see an artery or a, a vein, no artery. There's no pulsation, and it's right in the middle of the, the, uh, the screen. I like to take the back, the little circle of the IV, and I'll press right where I'm thinking I'm going to poke, just to verify that when I oh, look, when I press right now, it's over to the right, or I guess to the uh, stage right, screen left. So I'm going to move over just a hair. There you go. That's where I want to press, like right in there. And so now, look, I've actually, where I'm pressing, with the, that back tip, now I've got a little circle there where I know if I put my needle there, I'll be in the right spot. Okay, so the needle goes in just a hair. Okay, and look, I'm off to the right a little bit, so I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna pull out, I'm gonna go just a little bit to the right there. There you go. There you go. All right, look. All right, I'll see that metal tip in the, in the, in the vein. Can you see that, Chesty? Mm -hmm. So watch, I'm gonna take my left hand, move it proximal, boom. Now I don't see anything. Now watch, I move my right hand forward and I see a white tip again. See that? Yes. I keep leapfrogging. So left hand proximal, right hand proximal. Left hand proximal, I've lost the tip. Right hand proximal, I'm back in. So on and so forth, I've lost it again, there you go. Left hand proximal, lost the tip. Right hand proximal, it comes back into my field of view. I'm gonna keep doing that. Left, now, left hand proximal, I've lost the tip. Right hand proximal, I'm in the field of view. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Okay, see how it goes? Now watch this. If I turn the needle like this, look. Can y'all see that? Can you see that needle? It's in the vein there. You see the top of the vein and the bottom of the vein? Can you point, Brian? This is it, right? Yeah, bottom of the vein right there, you see? So I know that I have not back walled. So that's the bottom of the vein I'm touching. That's the top of the vein up there, and I'm right in the middle there, okay? So now, watch this. I take my ultrasound, I drop it, keep my right hand steady, and with my left hand, I thread through like that, okay? And now, remember, this is a two and a half inch vessel, so I need to occlude pretty proximal, which I did not do a good job of, and I put my saline lock on right there, okay? Now, one thing to know is this, all this ultrasound gel makes this very high risk time to pull that catheter out. So what I'm gonna do is verify that the, this thing's placed and then my immediate priority is getting it secured. So look, I pull back a little bit, look, nice blood return, okay? I'm gonna release my tourniquet and I'm gonna flush here. Okay, that flush easy? Hmm? Oh flush yes. Easy? Yeah, yes. okay, so now I know I'm in. Okay, so tons of tons of either paper towels or four by fours, that's gonna be your friend. So first thing, I'm gonna hold this um, IV with my left hand and I'm gonna start cleaning, uh, wiping off the gel from po proximal to distal. If I, if I wipe this direction, like I'm pulling that IV out a little bit. So I wipe from proximal to distal. So that way I'm, I'm pushing the skin towards the IV and not the other way around minimizes your risk of pulling it out, okay? Also feels a lot better. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you one little technique, so let me get all this stuff kind of clean. Okay, okay. So there's always gonna be gel up under this catheter, so what I do is I take, take the kind of taut four by four and I slide it up under the, the catheter until it gets to the very end and I, and I kind of gently wipe off any of the gel right there. Okay, I've done that. Now I'll take a, an alcohol swab, same thing. Go up under there, get that gel. And any, any gel around there, you try to wipe off that alcohol swab. Okay, 
and then take one final four by four, same thing, okay? So now we're secured, we're ready. Now we're clean, ready to secure. So I take my Curlex, or, excuse me, my Tegaderm, and I do three things to secure. So number one, Tegaderm goes on top, okay? And notice it doesn't stick very well. It takes a while for these to stick well just because there's so much gel and it takes a while to get that gel off. Number two, I take some tape. I'm gonna take my gloves off for this part. I usually take plenty of tape. I'm an aggressive taper. I actually go around the whole arm. I'm not gonna do that though, <clears throat> just for the sake of pulling the arm, hair off his arm, but I usually taper 360 degrees. And then I take the coban at the very end and I put that on. So lift her arm up. Okay. So I've got three methods to secure. I do it all of them every single time just to make sure I don't lose that vessel. If you're doing this in the right patient population, they're not easy to get IVs on, and so you definitely don't want to make sure you lose it. Some of these people often will be like dialysis dependent, that sort of stuff. And um, if you find a vein, that's your only one. So be very careful not to lose it once it's in. All right, uh, I think that's it. Any questions from either of you all? Okay, well, thanks. Hope this helps. Bye.